Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. This is Monday, June the 22nd at 8.43 a.m. I sure do pray that Jesus comes before this stupid vaccine comes out. I have to share with you this information, and it is from Israeli News Live, and they give their sources and who they are. This, you've got to hear this. You've got to pass this on. In this video, they are going to tell you that pastors, even here on YouTube, like Paul Begley and someone else, oh, Mike from around the world, will tell you that if you are like a first responder, police, nurse, doctor, don't worry about it. Jesus will help you if you take this vaccine. Hair, stay back. <laughs> I over dried it. Now it's not wanting to behave. Okay. So I'm going to let you listen to this just a little bit. This is Steve and Yana discussing this horrific news, if you haven't heard it already. Viruses for vaccines to start using aborted fetal tissue some years back. Dr. Daisha's reply was that the industry be getting a lot of pressure from the animal rights movement to stop using animals for experimentation. Mr. Kennedy was shocked and he stated, it's kind of a weird thing to think that the animal rights activists have more clout with the vaccine companies than do the anti-abortion activists. Dr. Daisha replied, they do. And you know what's really alarming is the lack of outcry over human babies born alive at five to six months old so that their hearts can be obtained beating. And they have to be beating to be used in the research that's being done. It okay, should be I'm essential. Gonna, I'm going to fast forward it to this person who was called to be on prayer a prayer call with uh, the White House. I forget her title. So let me put this up here and play this. Okay, that's, that's another subject altogether that this whole thing is a hoax and that right now the gates of hell have been open and we are living on a planet called hell because these kind of things are happening okay so but anyway i would like to also point out to this particular lady and um here we go i forgot jill noble okay jill noble as you all know we had Dr. June Knight with us several times on the show. She's a White House correspondent. And this particular lady here, Jill Noble, was invited uh, for a prayer. Uh, she was on a prayer call that was happening in the White House. And she's speaking about her experience that matches the same words Dr. June Knight was telling us. Dr. June Knight was on the same call as Jim Noble was. So here we go. You have two witnesses now, people, of what happened on that call. And I want to play it for you. Pause it. Pause it. Okay. Uh, make go it down big, to the right? No, go to the volume. Yeah, you can make it big as well. But Okay. Okay. And then make it big. Wait till you hear this. Okay, now play it. Hey, Facebook Live. Um, I'm sorry, her volume is not very loud. Mine is turned up as loud as it can go, so you may have to hush all outside noises up, turn up your headphones if you have them, if you can. But anyway, she's worth trying to listen to. Okay, here we go. I've been thinking about doing this Facebook for, I don't know, probably about a week now. And uh, I just decided I'm going to go ahead and do it. Um, 
I was recently invited to be on a prayer call with the White House. And uh, on this prayer call, uh, they brought on Dr. Deborah Burks. And you all know who she is. She's been seen on uh, the White House uh, news briefings with President Trump quite a bit lately. She's part of the, well, in fact, she's now the uh, lead on the uh, COVID task force. So that's, that's who she is. Yes, so we trust her, right? Well, if you trust Trump, you by the time you listen to this, and there's a follow-up video that I'm going to link that you're going to want to hear also, you will understand why you cannot trust Trump in promising a safe vaccine. And you'll find out why if you listen to these videos. Okay, so, uh, so I'm on this, I'm on this phone call, and I can't figure out why they brought Dr. Burks on this prayer call. I, I don't get it. I, I just didn't understand. But she came on because she was going to tell us about um, the faith community, and she was going to share with us as faith leaders. Uh, the guidelines, her, her guidelines, her suggested guidelines. Okay, so uh, she starts out by telling us, first of all, that the primary group with the largest out, uh, outbreak of COVID was the faith community. Well, you know what? I took a little exception to that. Because, frankly, the faith community has not even been allowed to gather. And so, I don't know where she gets off saying that the largest outbreak, or the primary outbreak, is the faith community. Because that's, that's a blatant lie. That is simply not true. And I, I kind of had a fit about it, but of course we were muted on the call, so it didn't do any good for me to throw a fit. She couldn't hear me. Then she went on to say that uh, there were some other things that she wanted to address about the faith community. Now, we're talking about people like you and I, okay? And she's saying that uh, other people in the faith community are um, were leaders. And because of this, she wants to encourage us to do a few things. You're going to love this. Oh, yeah, you're going to love this. One of the things she wanted to encourage us to do was stop singing. She said singing released that? droplets. And these droplets, of course, spread COVID. And so she asked us to stop singing when we gather together. And again, I was pretty outraged by this because this felt like an absolute assault on us as Christians mm -hmm. so so she attacks our community by saying we're the reason that the outbreak is spreading which is a lie then she comes back and says and by the way I'm going to ask you to stop singing right well forget it Deborah Burks That's right. forget it forget it oh but wait it gets better then she tells us that uh, because it's so dangerous to gather together as believers that she has written into the guidelines <laughs> that we just stay at home. She prefers we just stay at home. And she said she was going to push that, that we would just stay at home. So we're the reason that COVID is spreading. We need to stop singing because evidently that spreads COVID. And now we need to stay at home. Just okay, she goes on. Stop having church all together, even though it's been, I don't know, are churches meeting now? Does anybody go to church still or know somebody? I don't, I don't know anybody here that, that goes. The people that I knew that went, well, there is one lady. I could ask her if her church is meeting. 
She's taking me to the vet next week. But anyway, let me let me let you continue. And she says in her in her guidelines, she goes on and says, and by the way, because you were leaders in your faith community, I'm going to ask you. Now, this is Deborah Burks talking to us on the on the prayer call. She says, I'm going to ask you to uh, encourage the elderly and the weak and the immunocompromised among your faith community to take the vaccines. And now, Deborah Burks, we will not do your dirty work. We are not going to encourage our people in our communities to take an untested, deadly vaccine with replicated DNA in it, whatever that is. No, we're not going to do it. We're on to you. We know precisely what you're trying to do. You're trying to shut us down. And you know what? It isn't going to work. Because we're not going to let you Amen. dictate to us how to worship. We're not going to let you dictate to us when we're going to gather, how we're going to gather. And we're absolutely not going to let you dictate to us that we're going to encourage our elderly and immunocompromised among us to take a vaccine that you know full Hallelujah. well will kill them. Amen. So, Ooh, I've said my mistakes. Okay, so yeah. here we go. She again. What's in the White House? This is. I like, wanted to start jumping up and down. I mean, my God. Just like. Okay, I'll end that there. You get the point. There's a lot going on, and they're not going to disclose. In the next video, they talk about no disclosure to the average person, like that listens to Paul Begley going to go and get their vaccine because they're a first responder and they know Jesus is going to help them because they have to have it in order to do their job and keep from getting sick. To take, They don't want to get it and take it home to their families. Of course not. No disclosure that they have to birth babies at five to six months old so they can be alive. Keep them alive until they cut open their chest with no anesthesia to get the cells out of a beating heart. Does that not sound satanic? That is exactly what they do in a satanic ritual. Now, I, I wanted to ask, I wanted to go, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> but, of course, they couldn't see me. How do you keep the heart beating? Are they going to hook it up to one of those heart machines that keeps the heart beating when they do a heart transplant. You know what I'm talking about. They take a heart out of a dead, basically dead person uh, when they harvest organs. If that heart stops beating at all, it is no longer good for transplant. So they have to take it out. As they cut one artery, they have to hook it up to this artificial machine that'll keep it beating and then they cut the other ones they hook them up like plumbing uh, I don't know how they attach it but anyway then the heart is placed into this box that keeps it beating so I'm just wondering do they go to all that expense a heart transplant is like hundreds of thousands of dollars between the surgery the surgeons, the anesthesiology, the length of hospital care, of the use of that box. I can't remember what it's called, but it keeps the heart alive. So I was just wondering, do they just want it beating because that's how they do in a satanic sacrifice? Or do they need it kept alive so that the cells are alive when they're well, you could actually cut the heart open and while it's still in there beating, take out what cells you want. I mean, it's just disgusting to the max to think of putting something like that in your body. As Steve points out in the next video that you are complicit with this. 
It is absolute murder. And how they pointed out that if a young girl has a baby at home and she doesn't have a father, she knows she won't get support, uh, afraid of what the parents will do, whatever, wherever she ends up having it, if not at home, and she wraps it up and puts it in a garbage bin and then gets found out and caught. She'll go to jail for murder if that baby dies. Is that not the truth? It always used to be. That's murder. So what are they doing? Oh, it is just so disgusting. It's like, Lord Jesus, we need you. Give us some hallelujah news. And we need it quick because things are getting so awful bad. Of course, then Steve goes on to talk about in the next video how they've been doing this over in Israel. And Netanyahu signed it into law that they could do this years ago. So is it any wonder that Israel has problems? I mean, but of course, a lot of them are right up there with the Illuminati. You know that, don't you? They're not exempt from all of this. That's why they're still on the map. But God has protected them. God is so merciful. Because there are Orthodox Jews over there that love him and pray and pray. And they go to that wailing wall and they pray and they put their prayers in the wall and they do their Orthodox stuff and they mean it and... For them, the Lord protects Israel, but they're evil also. And Steve talks about that. So, this needs to be shared. And I'm going to share both of them on my Facebook, if they'll stay up. Facebook's been removing videos left and right. My friend showed me three that were taken down yesterday on uh she sent a text of the like you could take a screenshot of their words this was removed because it does not oh i could pull it up but I, i'm watching the clocks i have to go to the clinic and my friend is going to doggy sit for me isn't that nice anyway the only good thing that comes out of this is that the mother who doesn't want this child, these children, they go immediately to Jesus. And if that mother doesn't repent and end up in heaven, then somebody who never got to have a child gets to raise that baby. That's the only good that comes out of this. In the meanwhile... You refuse that vaccine and spread the word that people should. And do you know this video actually got 90 thumbs downs? I really honestly believe people believe he just makes stuff up. Ever since he's brought Yana on, she's she was a midwife, but she's also a great researcher. And she gets these women that are of high repute of high uh, Lord help me I need the word they're reputable they're 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 worth listening to okay their sources are good like Celeste Solom was one work for FEMA Dr. Day Dr. Milkovitz I shared a video with one of you about her work. The book she wrote was how she discovered the cause and possible cure to MECFS. And guess who buried her work through her in jail and autism? Both. Threw her in jail for five days and then put a gag order on her for five years. And a good lawyer helped her to get this book produced. 
the first one about MECFS and autism. Dr. Tony Fauci was the one who had her thrown into jail for five days just to show her we can do it and we will. If you talk about this, if you tell anyone about your work and what you discovered, you can find her book on her books. They just released a current updated version that has a forward by Dr. or uh, sorry, Robert Kennedy Jr. I'll end it here. I'll plead the blood of Jesus over this video. The internet connection. Myself, my computer. And over each and every one of you and all of your devices. And your internet connections. And I pray you'll spread this. It's bad news, but people need to know it. It's horrible news. But we knew they were putting H-E-K 293 in our food. And they bring that up, too, in the next video. Which I don't need to play any of it. You, you can watch it. if It's an update to this video. So, it's this one's only 19 minutes and 38 seconds. They're not long. But they're, they're so worth sharing with your ignorant friends and family who have no idea and will take that vaccine just so they can come out of their house, buy or sell, whether it's the, they don't think it's the mark of the beast. But if you got to have it to buy or sell or go to a store, what do you think? That's why I hope we're just, we got to be out of here before it comes to pass. We have to be, because we're just, we spared the hour of temptation. That's Revelation 3, 10 and 11. Now, that's the church of Philadelphia. And if that's not the bride of Christ and those who are worthy, counted worthy, Luke 21, 36, counted worthy to escape all these things that are to come to pass, that is... That hour of temptation is take this vaccine or you won't leave your house. And they'll put a ankle bracelet on you or something. Because I believe at first it'll be a choice. And then it'll later become mandatory. Anyway, I'm going to end it here. I pray you all have a blessed day or a blessed night whenever you see this. I want to say, may God have mercy on their souls. But I don't know if I'd mean it. Seriously, if they're savable, I pray they I pray they get a guilty conscience. And everyone involved stops doing what they're doing. Some may. God can still reach people if they're not part of the Nephilim. And I saw in a video, I believe it was on Brideon, where Trump took what they were calling equivalent to the mark of the beast the second day in office. He took his vaccine. And I'm like, could it be? I don't know. But it doesn't matter. I, I don't remember the source, so I don't know. Just forget I said that until I find out where I heard it. All right. I'll say bye for now. Y'all have a blessed day. Or a good night. Bye-bye <laughs> okay. for now.